I spent a morning with Lynn Ray in the Little Rock Historical Museum, Arkansas, where he showed us how to form one of his famed X-ray utility knives. With his permission, I filmed the process as best I could. Again, this part right here, I try to... But I'm trying to keep that from getting cupped in there. You know, like oh. <laughs> He's usually directing it at you. Kind of working on a section from here to here. And I'll back from here to there, blend it. chamfer these these corners a little bit but I want to do that rivet standoff and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and drive it into there and create a half moon shape I'm just using a piece of half inch round just random piece that anybody might have in their shop so I've got a taper and a taper to me that's important to make the knife light and strong. Okay, let's get this So we're about right there. It's a little bit. Oh, is that the beaver tail? Okay, see, I don't know which one's which. Now I know. We got dog, dog leg, leg and beaver, beaver tail. tail. And we'll think of something else here. Some other parts. <laughs> See, I'm going to re-round that again and do that again, and we'll have us a place. If I come this way, I turn it the opposite direction. Because I want that to, to come over here and have an angled transition from handle to blade. Yeah. So it's stronger. If it's squared off, it's, it's a little weaker. If it's slanted, it's, it just makes it longer, the connection longer and stronger. All right. Okay, this curve that comes around down is a mirror 
or a mimic of this one, except this one, the radius is slightly smaller. So I think that those two curves work very well together. And, and so I want this to be a continuation right down here. And so this just interrupts it, but it, since it's a, uh, we have this line and this line, that doesn't catch your eye or snag it too bad. As long as the curves look good, it's a pleasing effect. And I'm, whenever I grab it with the vise, I stay well in front, well in front of that step. That step, that where that angle is going to be, because I don't want that to come up there and interfere with my. And then you'll do it again on yeah the other side. Yeah. Oh, Take it easy, and there we go, perfect. And I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna lay it on an angle and with the handle off. And as I bring that material out, see, and I'll, I'll turn it around and use the anvil to flatten those hammer marks like this. But I wanna get it hot again. And I will, I will fiddle around with that. I'll probably drive that half inch in there again, kind of line it back out the way it's supposed to go. step right there mm -hmm. so as I forge everything I will continually draw this way and thin and bevel so I want this essentially is going to be the blade thickness same here as here and everything gets thinner and this will cut about right here now if we've got a, a dog's leg and a beaver tail what do we call the hump? camel's hump Camel hump, that's good. Yeah, we don't have many camels around here, but that's good. <laughs> we might import some. Before it's over. Just so you can call it a camel hump. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring a camel in. Yeah, we'll be right here. And another thing that I'd like to do Okay, it's getting about right for a blade thickness for me. See, and everything will thin from there. This volume of material will just get longer and thinner. But if, if I go ahead now and get it where I want it, uh, I can work on it from the other direction and just pull it out this way. But I'm gonna, what I'll do is go ahead and chamfer these and get that beaver tail. <laughs> Just kind of getting the start. I can file some of that in. And by doing it that way, the uh, the anvil will actually smooth those original champers hammer marks. bottom so that the ham the anvil actually smoother is smoother on top. Better heat that just a little bit. But not much. Twist 
twist it on me a little. I'll straighten that out real quick. Yeah. See, that's all I was wanting to do right there. Just, you put just ever slightly so much? Just so it, it kind of blends. Uh, makes that yeah. look better. And this, when it pulls down, will actually go back to complete and, and, that curve. And complete the curve, yeah. yeah. I gotta remember to film it. So I'm watching I'm watching in, I'm filming the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. English. That's right. Like that or, or, tip to be right in the middle. Already kind of got a point on it for you. Yeah, yeah. And that'll draw out a lot longer than you think. It's really hard. I can do it. <laughs> tip of that just a little so it's got to start looks good I don't like that little rough fly it could be good I don't know that. I think camel toe is taken. Yeah. yeah, speaking of that, yeah. I can file a little bit to, to redefine this or lay it over a, a round bar and just hit the top of it. Lay a round bar right in there, yeah. you know. Um, as I need as I see the need, I don't see it right at the moment. So we'll see what happens. the other side and bring it back down. Bring the chip back down. Every time you do that you have to check it off. Mainly straighten it. Got a little 
spot right there that needs to pull down. Make it look a little better. It's still a little heavy right there. And if I draw that out, it'll pull the tip back down just a slot. I'm gonna push that this way with a small rod. With a 3 8 rod. Uh, I may go ahead and do that. Uh, if I get you to hold that for me. Yeah. All right. Beauty. Oh, camera's that way. <laughs> you do that too? I'll do that too. Right. 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 Well, okay. Right. So I want that, even that little tiny tip end of that, I want it to be hot. Looking for a teardrop shape. Are you going to upset it? Just hammer flat. be too thin. I want it to be uh, substantial enough that it doesn't look or feel weak. So I want the taper to flow right into it. Make sense? Yep. Okay. And another point that I'd like to bring out is that the flow when it comes around here and curves? This is sort of uh, on tangent with uh, with the center of the radius. Kind of runs perpendicular, yeah. Yes. So this swings through, um, and this angle, this standoff, this rivet standoff. If it's slightly this way or this way, it makes all the difference in, in the world in the way the, the final knife. And it, you may. You may find that you like, prefer, the look that this angle would would create, or you may like it more like this. So it's entirely up to your personal taste. He's not stopping. Well, he was, but, he's, but he, uh, he changed his mind. Yes, so you got room for your, your taste. You got room to tailor to your own taste. Another thing, when I punch the hole in it, since we're going to be swinging right by here, I want that guard to just come almost flush with the cutting edge. Yep. I like that. So I can actually cut on a flat tabletop. Mm -hmm. So I move in only about a half inch at the most to punch the hole right about in that, in that, in that area. I like it. That's ample tail to hang below the rivet. So that also gives you more of the handle back where you need it. If you push, push the hole up too far this way, you're gonna end up grinding off the part that you really need in the handle. Right. So, uh, very often, 
quite often I don't even have to touch this on the grinder or file it. Sometimes I will here. That looks pretty good. Um, but I want now I'm gonna uh, to file that. I'm gonna do a low red uh, subcritical anneal, as they would call it. John White would call it subcritical anneal, and it's just a low red, and then let it air cool, and I'll be able to. Um, I'm just going to come down roughly the thickness of where I'm going to go through the punch that hole and go through the beaver tail. I'm going to come down about that thickness plus just a, a hair more. To allow for the riveting. Yeah. So I'm going to octagon the piece first. And I'm primarily pushing to the side so that I won't keep going deeper. So I'm not blocking your light, am I? I can't hardly see anyway, so you might as well turn the lights out. <laughs> no, we're good. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna come around this way. And just try to. The, the good thing about fitting. Uh, this piece to this piece is we're going to do it hot mm -hmm. so it'll hot fit itself if you just get most of the material position right the way you need it. this file is about had it I'm ready to throw it in the river that's an expression <laughs> I'm not really going to do that. Is a plain old square file? Yeah, I, I just use it because it's coarse. It's, it's coarse. You know, I like, I'm just a coarse kind of a fella. Now I'm just want that corner. There we go. Once I get it to break, cut, start cutting. One side or the other usually cuts better for some reason. And One reason they don't cut good is because it's covered up with with metal. It hardly ever gets carded or cleaned. But these old files I keep out here in the shop, they might be filing on anything. Let me let me grab another one. Actually it don't feel like that. But after I get the, the rivet sort of rounded up, then that gives me an idea about how big to make that hole. Mm -hmm. So it don't have to be perfect. Also, the bottom seat around these shoulders, mm -hmm. that will fit the, the beaver tail if we're just pretty careful with it. I'm going to need to get right about in that position. I'm going to come around the side just a little bit. Just a little bit. I don't need much off the side. Now 
not going to get my hair cut, don't it? Uh, and there's ways, other ways of getting this rivet shaped like this. You might can use what they call a monkey tool or uh, of course the a really good file, a grow bay file, which we're not going to keep in this old shop, would help having a good high quality file. But I'm using what we got right out here in the shop. And I, I like just using the tools we got. Okay. It doesn't take much. We're just going to get it kind of rounded up where it looks sort of like a little post. And then we're going to come back and about a half inch in, we're going to punch a hole and uh, we're going to do our last punch from the outside because that's the part that we need. The punch is cone shaped, tapered. We want the biggest part on this side, the smallest part of the hole here. And it'll end up snapping on there and uh, we'll fill that cone shape in. So let's get it hot and punch a hole. Start with punching. I'm going to punch from this side and then finish up pow and then jerk it right back up here to the um, that hole. So we'll go pow, pow, and let's see pow, 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 pow and pow. pow. Like Barney Five says, pow, pow, pow. <laughs> Must be an American thing. Yeah. Gotta live here a while. The North Carolina thing. Get it to be, uh, we want it to be kind of a bright orange. Yeah, go ahead and give it a few puffs. Wow, you made that look easy. See that right there? That's the plug. It's real hot probably, but that's the plug right there. Excellent. Is that old? Oops. That's about right. A little twisted, but not too bad. Not too Using a small you see that snapped on? Yeah. Go ahead. What I'm driving is the first thing I'm hitting the first thing that I come to with a hammer. So it might be the I'm gonna hit it with that pie out there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That starts setting it in there, see? So there's still a little gap? A little bit, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll start setting it in there. thing gets on there it don't have to have much it's not going to unravel like a noodle right it's it's going to just be held 
So that's, that's now I'm going to widen the gap and shape the handle. I'm going to reshape the handle. See that pushed, pushed it back on. I'm, I still got to tighten it just, to, just a little. Um, there might be a, a little bit more adjustment to do. Right, that's twisted just a little. Am I can. Heat it and just kind of crank it just a little to get that lined up better. These are really small tongs, but they don't take much. So you have to say it's not the size that counts. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to put just a little more curve on this to, to match this curve here. Mm -hmm. Just the act of pushing down, it pushes that forward. Yeah. Hey, one of the problems of uh, that you might run into if you're going to try to forge this and bring that around is uh, is filing the rivet to where it's long enough to go through and have plenty of material to make a head. At times, uh, you you may be tempted or uh, you may be necessary to forge just a really short uh, post and it barely clears this side of the guard and uh, you don't have quite have enough to make a head that will hold good. So and it, most of the time it works out great. But there are times when uh, you may have to like resort to a fix, just fix it to save the knife, save the project. Uh, there's no problem with that, but uh, so for instance, this one right here, that turned out a little short. So we're going to share how to do that. We'll just take a TIG welder and just go put a little right there on that post. It's just flush, but we're just going to touch it with a TIG welder, and it will basically be the head for that rivet. Uh, yes, that's not ideal, but in some cases we do that. If it happens that way, it helps to know for somebody who yeah. that happens to you know how to fix it. Yeah, you won't get frustrated, and uh, and the next one you do better. Yeah, yeah, we just get make that longer and do it right, and then I can reshape this handle because it's captured. That's captured, and I can widen this gap, this space right here, and make that look more flowing. And I've got one that's cooled off, that looks more like we want, 
and that's the one that's the way we want it let's see the rivet area so that's a that? yeah that's a nice clean rivet we can see there yes brilliant okay Thank you very much, Lynn, for showing us how to make one of your x-rays and hope many people will learn from this. Glad to do it. Any problems or any questions, just contact me. Everybody can contact me easily. Uh, on Facebook, you are on Lynn Ray? That's correct. Facebook yeah. or Instagram. Or Instagram or is at Lynn Ray. Uh, yes. Yes. Undersc any underscores at or L one? L-W-R-H-E-A. L-W-R-A. At L-W-R-A. All right. All lowercase. Thank you very much, then. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Bob Kramer says there's three T's to knife making, time, temperature, and technique, and I totally agree.